Having seen the code, we now need to think about the life cycle for this example. The life cycle is fixed. It's part of that control servlet that is given to us by the JSF framework. And it always follows the same life cycle. So when a request is received, the first thing that it will do is to represent the view that has just submitted some data and it will represent it as a tree of UI components. Having built the tree that represents that view, it will then populate the tree with values that have come from request parameters. And if there are any elements in that tree that don't have values provided by the request parameters, then it might use a previous state to populate the rest of the tree. Having populated the tree, it will then perform conversions and validations. This I will talk about in another lecture. When the tree has been created and populated, the next step is to update model components. And simply put, this means copying valid values from the UI tree into server-side beans. And then it's time to render the response, which will include fetching a new view if one is needed, building a tree to represent that view, and then using values from the server-side beans to populate the elements of that tree. Then we output the view using the values that are in the tree. And then for beans that are not on the request scope, in other words, on the session scope or application scope, we will then save those beans so that the state that we're in now can be reinstated when it comes to the next request. And that's where previous state would come from. So let's take a step-by-step -step view of the life cycle for the example we've been looking at. Starting off with index.xhtml. The thing to note here is that we're starting at this point because this is the first of the UI components that will figure in the tree. The tree always has as at its root a UI view root object. So this is a standard class that is provided as part of the JSF environment. And because we've now encountered a form tag, that will generate an object of type HTML form, which is one of the standard underpinning classes mentioned earlier. Within the form, we've got an input text tag and a command button tag. And therefore, in the tree, underneath the form object, there will be an HTML input text object and an HTML command button object. That tree now represents the structure of the view. And so we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to populate the tree with values that have come from the request parameters. When this form was submitted, this text box had a value. That value is then copied into this element of the UI component tree. And the button also had a value, which is also copied into a component of the tree. So now our view has been captured in this tree with the values that have been provided. So we're ready to move on to update the model. Now our model has got a single field with a corresponding get and set method. At this point, we're using set methods because we're copying values from the tree into the bean. Now I say we're copying, of course, it's the servlet that's doing this. The controller servlet will call set username passing as the parameter this value here. And of course, the method will then simply set the value of the field to the value of the parameter. Now, in this very simple example, that's all we're doing in the model. But of course, we could do other more complicated things. For example, we might now be in a position to use this value to extract information from a database in preparation for rendering that data in a second view. But for this simple example, we'll leave it as it is. The model has been updated, and so now we're ready to render the response. Now, this next part requires another view, page2.xhtml. So what we're going to do is build the UI component tree for the new view, and we're going to populate the output text with a value that has come from the bean, the model. The control servlet will do that by calling get username which will take the value stored in the field and put it into this object here. There's also this element here with the value index.xhtml, which is the link to the next page, should the hyperlink be taken. Having built the tree, 
for the new view, we're now ready to output the view. And as we can see here, that output text has taken its value from here. And although we can't see it here, the href for this hyperlink has taken its value from there. So let's look at another example. Here in this example, there is only one view. And so the view is going to be re sending a request. And also, if we were to refresh it, it would send another request and simply just output the same view, but with a new set of values for time and date. In terms of the server side components, the request will come into the controller. The controller will update the model, which in this example, since there are no request parameters coming in, is simply going to be an instantiation of the current time backing beam. And then the next view will be rendered and using the values that come from current time. Let's take a look at the code. We'll start off in the index.xhtml file, which is the one and only view. And the thing to note here that there are no input elements, only an output text element here and another one there. These are linked to the current time managed beam, a backing beam. This field to the property time as string and this field to the date as string property. Now, if we take a look in the bean, we'll find actually there are no such fields. The only field we've got is now, which is a date. So when we are linking to this property, we're actually linking to a pretend property. It doesn't exist as a field in the bean. But that doesn't matter because what will happen is that at the appropriate time, when we want to pro populate the field with the value, the get method will be called get time as string and get date as string. And we're providing those methods here. And they will provide a value that's based on the field there. So let's think about how things work. First of all, it's a managed bean. Oh, and look, I've specified a name here. So we don't have to use the default name. We could provide our own. Now, in this example, I've actually used the default name as the name I'm providing. But if you want to make up your own name for the managed bean, that's fine. And it's this name that will be used in the XHTML file whenever we want to refer to that bean. So if I change that to date time, then I would have to change this to date time as well. We can see that it is request scoped. Therefore, a new instance of this bean will be created for each request. And when that happens, the constructor will be called, which will create a new date object and store its reference in now. At the time of the request, we get a new date and time. I've also declared here a couple of simple date format objects, which will allow us to represent the date and to represent the time using those format strings. And I use the formatters here when we want to get the date or when we want to get the time as strings. Again, let's take a look at the life cycle for this. First of all, the control servlet builds the UI component tree that represents this view that has just been submitted. There is no input and therefore only output here. So our view is much simpler than on the previous example. We've just got two HTML output text objects. So when it comes time to update the model, there are no request parameters. There is no previous state because this is a request scope. And therefore, the view tree is completely unchanged. So not much went on with the update of the model other than creating a new instance of the current time beam. When it comes time now to render the response, we're going to fetch a new view if needed. Well, there isn't one that's needed. We're going to use the same view as before. So we don't create a new tree. We just use the existing one. And we use the values that will come from this beam here and store them in there. And we'll do that by calling get time as string to provide this value and get data string to provide that value. And with the view ready for output, we can then render that tree as the view as defined by the XHTML file. 